Hey, it's Tom, and in this video, we're going to look at using the screw cutting attachment for the uh, Colchester, uh, the Cosin Colchester lathe that I have. All right, so this is something I actually talked about quite a while ago when I first got this lathe is that it has a special kind of uh, threading adapter on it. Uh, most of us are used to using thread dials, you know, thread chasing dials, one through four, some lines, and you know, right? So we, most of us are used to doing that. This one does not have that functionality. It's got a special gearbox on it that basically always keeps it engaged properly, keeps the half mount engaged properly. So um, <clears throat> I've never used one of these before. In fact, today I sat down with some aluminum and turned some uh, 3816 thread because, well, frankly, I didn't know how it was going to work. And, um, you know, I got to, you know, I want to make sure I can do this right. So, as most of you may know, if you're following along in the series, uh, my nephew, uh, Nick, and I have been working on a project. This is his clamp that we've been working on, right? So, um, we used the stainless that I had been using on the CNC mill um, for the body parts of it. We turned 303 stainless for the different pins. I uh, drilled and tapped this one. And uh, so there's a different series. You'll be able to see all that stuff. <clears throat> this one though is 3816, right? So the drive mechanism for this, the bar that pushes this open and close, is 3816. Now, originally, I have this piece of uh, you know, all thread, right? And the plan originally was, hey, you've got a bunch of all thread. Use your all thread, right? Screws right in. Good to go. So cut this down, put a handle on it, figure out how you're going to clamp it together, right? It seemed like cheating. Um, there's times when you know, all thread's great, right? I typically would use all thread for something like this. Um, but this is a, his handmade clamp. Right? Um, now, we don't have enough time for me to sit here and work with him on every little part of what we do on the lathe. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm using the, the, uh, the evening time to cheat ahead a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is I've got another piece of this 303 stainless. Uh, same kind of stuff we used for the um, for the pins, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it down to um, uh, to the three eight sixteen with the integrated ball you know, nub on the end, so we can put the hand the handle through. So we'll drill it and press for the handle and and um, go from there. So I uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity to take a look at this screw cutting attachment. So let me put some of this stuff away, get it out of the way, and uh, we'll come back in and I'll show you, I think it's pronounced uh, Eingest or Angest um, is the name of the company, but this, um, this uh, threading attachment. So we'll be right back. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, uh, setup here. So like most lathes that are capable of cutting threads, um, you know, there's gearing that controls the, the carriage and that motion of the gearing. Right? Um, can you see? I guess you can kind of see back here. So we've got an Acme uh, uh, Acme thread here, right? When this is engaged, this allows you to move um, the uh, uh, the carriage at a particular pace, right? That that pace is your threads per inch, right? So based on how fast it's going will be your speed and everything else. But effectively, what it does is paces this so that you get the right number. In this case, we're trying for 16 threads for every, you know, for every revolution, I'm sorry, for every inch of forward travel. Um, what's interesting about this setup here, right, is that, uh, and this one, it says, I ingest, serial number is SD879. Um, can almost read. Yeah, 
British patent number 737602 something 76325 yeah so I don't know much else about it right other than we've got settings here and this guy this part right here which is kind of hard for you to see but this this part right here it's got a little arrow in the middle and there's 0 1 2 and 4 so 0 safe one, quarter threads, two, half threads, four, whole numbers, right? So, I put that to four. Everything else really is controlled by your um, gearing, right? So, your lever, this is how you activate it. You push down on it, it catches, and everything moves, right? You can lift up, and it'll, it'll, stop, uh, it'll stop motion. What's really neat about this setup, I'm not sure how well you can see it right now. You can kind of see there's this bar here, right? This bar actually goes from the front to the back. And along this bar is a little locking mechanism, which activate, actuates this lever here, right? So this is basically a lockout. You can't, you can't do anything. You take it out of lockout mode. Now you can engage it and then as this moves forward it hits the stop this pushes and disengages so you can automatically stop at the same point over and over and over again so it makes it really fast to thread because first off there's no dial to wait for you basically rest your hand on it and when it's ready it'll click into place right as it moves it'll automatically stop when it hits that you know, when, if you've got your setup right, it'll automatically stop for you. So all you really have to do is back up the uh, the cross line, go back, reset your zero, and come back at it. So it's a really neat setup, um, and uh, I was a little nervous about using it today, but I tell you what, it went fast. All right, so thank you, be able to see this. I'm gonna fire it up and just kind of give you an idea of what it's supposed to do. All right, so. The part's turning, but it doesn't matter because what this is doing is a gearbox. It's keeping it in the right place all the time. I just lead down, lead down until it catches. There we go, and it's gonna go. Until it hits its stopping point. It stop. I back it up. Come back out, go back to my zero, dial it a little on the, on the uh, dial a little bit more on the compound or, or the cross slide, do it all over again. But you'll notice you saw something on that one, right? There is a, a point at which it'll catch and not fully engage, right? And I found that out the hard way. Um, when I was doing my testing on this, I, uh, I was leaning against it and it did not want to go uh, all the way in for whatever reason. And it, it basically, it started moving, the whole carriage started moving, but it wasn't really engaged. Okay. Um, so I've got to watch for that. So what I did is I actually, I backed the compound out beyond where I need to uh, take up any of the backlash and then I give it some time to make sure that it's fully engaged. Um, that way, if I get a false uh, engagement on there, I can always just pop it back out and uh, go over. But let's take a look at what it looks like for real. All right, let's take a look here before I would do that. We'll run it one more time. This is that little stop. So you can see there's a bar that goes all along. And this stop, um, it, it actuates this lever here, right? And uh, so as we move forward, it will kick it'll kick this out and it'll kick this up. So let's run this one more time so you guys can kind of see it from this angle and then we'll, I'll show you what it looks like up top. So fire it up. Lean it against it, there it goes, it goes in place. And so now you can see it gets closer. Goes to that lever, actuates the lever, boom, pops up, right? Stops the forward motion. All right, so on that last pass we did, I actually did my little scratch pass, 
and that's showing my 16 threads uh, per inch, which um, I don't know what the thread gauge here, but you'll have to trust me on this one. It's it's at 16. Right? I didn't make any changes. It's it's at 16. It's working fine. The um, obviously we're not at the right thickness. I'm just doing this to show you a little bit about the uh, the process. But I'm back at zero. I'm just gonna do a five thousandths cut so you guys can see how this works. And effectively, we fire this up. Right. I'm pushing down, it's engaged, both hands, right? It's taking its cut. When it gets to the end, it pops out, back up, bring it back into zero. Right. So you guys can kind of see, we've started making some threads on there. So it's a really, really simple process. And what's nice about this is since you're not having to watch for the dial to go around or things like that, you're able to just quickly, boom, go. So let's do this from a different angle so you can kind of see how the carriage controls work. All right, so in the headstock, we've got our, our grid here. And so we determine um, you know, the thread, basically, um, you can see you've got your, both your feed, your forward feed, and then your threading. And so I knew at 16 I needed to be uh, in this column here, and um, A and D. So pretty straightforward with that. This lever is what uh, actuates or disengages the, um, the thread cutting. So we have that uh, turned on. But uh, otherwise, everything else is handled up here. So let's, let's stop, we'll change angles, and I'll show you. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to, to do this without getting in your way. So we fire it up. You should be able to see that we've got here. I turn it off. You see the uh, screw is not going. That's saying that I'm, I'm doing my uh, threading. Right. Our little dial here is turning, but we're not paying any attention. We've already set that to what we need. Our compound's on zero. Our cross slide will give it an extra five thousandths from that last cut that we just did. And then we just push down on this and it'll lock. Right, there it goes. It's going all by itself. We're doing our 5,000 cut. Everything's going fine all by itself. And then what I'll do, disengaged, I back off the uh, cross slide, back it up, go back to zero. Take out some of the slag. And it goes, right? And I don't have to do anything special. It's just doing it all by itself. All right, so there you have it. Um, you know, that's threading on this old uh, Colchester. Um, it is a little different than what uh, what I've done in the past. A whole heck of a lot different than my old uh, South Bend. But um, I tell you what, I can get used to that. I mean, I found I have to slow myself down just to do the video because um, after doing, you know, you get, in, you get into the swing of this a little bit and it's just boom, 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 go, flip, go, flip, go, flip, go. And this could be really fast. So you, um, with, once you have this set up, especially if you're doing uh, repetitive parts, I could really see how having this tool, um, or having this threading attachment was, uh, was very time saving, right? Um, you know, because you don't, you're not waiting for it, you're just, just push down and go. Um, now I probably need to clean that, um, that screw out. Uh, you know, I got this lathe a year ago, about this time last year. And um, I haven't really, other than just doing a basic service on the headstock, you know, change the oils and make sure everything's lubed up right, um, I haven't done much, so, um, other than cleaning up the chuck. So, you know, I'm due to, to clean some of this. That might make that actuation happen a little better. But uh, I thought you guys might be interested. You know, I was following uh, Stan's flowchart on does this, uh, you know, 
is there already a video on this out there? And yeah, there's plenty of videos on um, cutting threads, but none with using this tool um, or using this kind of attachment. So kind of a neat uh, little setup, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again.